In this slidecast, we're going to look at the elements of a contract. Now, the elements of a contract are the things that need to be present in order for a co contract to be properly formed. In other words, what is it that makes a document a legally binding contract? What makes it that makes an agreement legally binding? And that's what the elements of the contract are. Um, so let's look at a, an analogy here. You've got a bit of an aeroplane here. So you've got the body, you've got the propeller, you've got the cockpit and stuff like that. But it's not an aeroplane. It's not a plane because it hasn't got, it's got things missing. It's missing the wings, it's missing the ailerons, it's missing the rudder. So it's, it can't fly, it's not an aeroplane. So it's got some elements present. It's got its body, it's got its um, propeller, it's got the wheels, it's got the cockpit. It's got other elements missing. It's missing wings. It's missing ailerons. It's missing the rudder. Therefore, it's not really an aeroplane. Okay. Same with a document. It needs to have all of the elements of a contract present for it to be regarded as a contract. Otherwise, it's just just a document. So those elements of the contract, and I'll be looking at them in a bit more detail in following slides, are Offer and acceptance. Someone has to make an offer and the other party has to accept it unconditionally. We'll talk about that later on. Legal capacity. Uh, the parties must be legally competent, legally able to make a contract. So you can't make a contract with a kid, for example, with a child. They are regarded as too immature to be entering into a, a, a legal relationship. Uh, genuine consent. Both parties need to be entering into the contract willingly, not being forced into it. So you can't put a gun to my head and make me shot, sign a contract document. That's illegal. Uh, apart from, and also, it's not my genuine consent. So even if I sign it, you still can't say that that's a legally binding contract because it, it, I did not have my genuine consent. Proper form. Um, the contract must set out the factors that are essential, the essential elements, to define the contractual relationship. You can't have a contract just saying you will build me a road from point A to point B because it doesn't define exactly what needs to be built, it doesn't define um, what the road is. You need to say the road needs to be 4 metres wide, it needs to have 150 mils of base course, 150 mils of sub base, uh, they are to be made out of the following materials, it is to be done in this period, time period, and so on. And the bulk of an engineering contract is to provide those essential elements, those things that need to be known um, to define the contractual relationship. So the drawings define the contractual relationship. The specifications, same thing. The legality, the subject matter must be lawful. You can't have a contract to kill someone because killing people, murder, is illegal. Likewise, you can't have a consideration, a consideration is what is paid for, is the payment, that is illegal. So I can't say, uh, you build me a house and I'll give you half a kilo of marijuana. Okay, Marijuana is illegal, therefore the payment is illegal, therefore there is not a binding contract there. The intention, both parties need to have intend to enter into a legal relationship. If someone comes to your house, never met him before, and starts washing the house, he can't say, oh, we've entered into a legally binding relationship where you have to pay me to do the house. You have not shown your intention to enter into that relationship. Therefore, there is not a legally binding relationship. Okay. And the last one, consideration. Things of value need to be exchanged. So for an engineering contract, typically, uh, the contractor provides or builds a road or a building or a pipeline or whatever and which is something of value and the client the principal pays them for it with money which is something of value um, contracts can there's no reason why it should be money that's the payment it could be goods and like so you know if you want to swap your car with your mate um, you've swapping goods they're both things of value you've entered into a contract relationship to do that now in the following slides we're going to look at each one of these elements in a little bit more detail.